Hey guys, hey going. We are here and we are live again. So um, today I'm going to do a follow-up video from Tuesday's live because um, it actually went really well Tuesday's live. I wasn't really sure how it was going to go, how it was going to work, um, if people would respond to it and like it, but I did get a really good response and thank you guys so much for watching it and all the comments that you've sent me and the comments on the videos and the likes and guys, I really appreciate it because, um, it's really hard when you put these videos out because you don't actually know what, um, people enjoy and what people get value from. So when you tell me, um, like that's awesome. So I did make mention in Tuesday's live, I kind of put it out there and said, does anyone want me to do an editing video? And I guess I know that I edit in a different way than what a lot of you guys are going to edit because most of you are pro probably using your phone to edit. Um, you're not using Photoshop, which is what I use. However, there's still a lot of things that like little tips that I can give you all along the way that you can you can use whether or not it's in um photoshop or an app or different things like that so i'll, I'll tr as i'm going through what i'm doing even though it's not going to be the same for you i'll try and give um some little tips as i go to, that maybe you can use in your apps and stuff so i've just blah, blah, but um let me say hello let me say hello to everyone who's in the chat Okay, we got Niall. Hi, Niall. First in. Ian's here again. Now, Ian was here on Tuesday and he was helping me out. As you know, he was um, reading the comments to me as I had the AirPods in and I worked. And I've actually got Ian back here again today because it just was really beneficial to me that I didn't have to stop and um, look at the chat. Now, during this live today, I'm going to be having to flick between multiple screens um, to show you the Photoshop screen, um, the, the raw screen and the bridge screen. So I'm, I'm going to be concentrating a little bit on flicking screens for you and just trying to explain what I'm doing as I go. So if Ian's here again, he can read me your questions and um, hopefully we can we can we could that uh that makes it better for me do you know what I mean like that all it just makes it easier for me because one I'm not very good at reading the chat as I as I'm talking anyway but this is not only talking this is me concentrating and showing you how I do something so it's very beneficial to me if I can hear somebody else reading the question so Ian is waiting down below and I will bring him up to say hello in a second hey G hey Brad and Jazz <laughs> Andrews, just be patient with me, Dales. Be patient. Um, where are we? Mel Thrift Fashion Finder, hello. Um, I don't know who's here. Thrifting Oz Style, hello. Hi, Kelly. Um, D Alexander, hi, Mel. We were chatting about you in a reselling group. Everyone loves your videos and how real you are about reselling. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Um, like, honestly, you guys are what keep me going, all the people over at Instagram who DM me, DM me with really nice comments and tell me that I'm helping them and that I'm giving them some value, like that's what keeps pushing me. And, um, you know, for the most part, I just really enjoy doing YouTube. <laughs> it gives me that creative outlet. I am a creative person. So um, I just enjoy, I just enjoy the whole process. So if there's something that I can help you guys with, I'm, I'm willing, I don't know it all. <laughs> I certainly don't know everything or know, know it all, but um, I'm willing to help with whatever I can. Apple Core Productions, what a day for live content. Oh, must be lots of good lives on today. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I haven't seen your name there. Hey, Serna, how are you going? The hat guru. I hope you've been getting a few people come over and watch your um your hat stuff, Sernok, because you know I'm a fan. Hey, Flipper's here. He's normally working or sleeping, so nice to see you, Flipper. Um, hey, Lainey, thanks for staying up. Can we see? No, no you can't. Cajun reseller, hi, how are you going? Um, Lindell, hello. Oh, my God, everyone's here. Tat, tat, 
Captain Oatshop, that's Tobes. Um, have we said hello to everyone? Daryl, the sweatshop mopper. Sweat, what? I just said sweatshop. It's not even sweatshop. Sweat. <laughs> um, hello, Andrew. Hello. I did say hello to you. Hey, Craig. Hey, going. And Aid's here. Hey, Aid. And I think that's it. So maybe we can get going. We've got um, about 27 here. I'll, let me just bring Ian up. Let's let's say good day to Ian. Hello. Hello again. We've got Hello voiceover again. boy. We've got the voiceover boy. Oh, voiceover boy. I like you. I like you. What, isn't that what somebody said last week? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The, um, what was that? Voiceover man. Voiceover man, hey, I think. Yeah. yeah. Voice <laughs> Not really yeah. a boy anymore, are you? Steady. <laughs> hey, Nick. Steady. How are you going? Um, so, yeah. So, basically, Ian, you just read me out any questions that I maybe don't see <laughs> some of the I do have the chat open here but it's I just know that if I'm concentrating here it's going to be tricky for me to read so if you can help me out that'd be awesome absolutely no problem at all. so yeah if anyone does have any questions make sure you <laughs> make sure you um put them in the chat for Ian so he can read them to me so basically what I'm going to do, Ian, I'm going to pop us down below and I'm going to bring up um, my first screen. So let me see where we are. Stig of the dump. Stig what? of the dump. Daryl's put stig of the dump. <laughs> and, that's, and, now, and that's for Georgina. I think I might you know, use a hammer and a, a, a wrench to get rid of it. <laughs> Okay, so guys, this is about as big as I can kind of make it. Like I just fooled around a little bit before so you can sh see it. But um, basically what I'm doing now is this is this is what bridge looks like. So obviously you saw that I shoot with the big camera. I'm not using the phone. But basically um, all I've done prior to this is I've gone in and see how down here I've star marked my photos as two. I don't know why I use two. It's just what my fingers do. But um, basically, you know how I was taking multiple photos the other day just in case one went out of focus or whatever? Yep. None of them, have, most of them are very rarely not out of focus, but I just take that second shot just as a backup. But then basically what I do is I just go and star mark one of each of the angles and then I can just um, sort it by the two stars so then I'm only looking at one item I hope that makes sense yeah does it okay Both, so yeah. basically um these were the these were all the photos that I took the other day while we were live so there was all the books that I did then we went down I did all the shoes this this, this is scrolling fast I know but we took all these shoes and then these were the clothes that I took. So what we'll do is we'll start off with some of these books and I'll show you how I would do this. So basically I'm just going to highlight, I don't know, this many. Let's just start with this many. Actually get that whole book. Right, so now I'm going to open these files. See how it's saying open 16 files. And let me screen share with you and change screens. Has that worked? Yep, okay. I'm, yep, I'm, yep. I'm getting there. I'm going to get the hang of it. Okay, so this is now taking me into my camera raw. So basically, this is where I'm going to adjust. And let me just have a look how it's displaying for you. So over on the right-hand side here, this is all my white balance, my temperature, my contrast, and different things like that. So you guys, even when you don't use what I'm using, I'm presuming that when you guys have like a photo app or something that you do your editing on, you have these kind of controls, temperature, exposure, brightness, um, things like that. 
basically what I do here is I highlight all the images down the left that I've opened up. So in this case, there's 16 of them. And over on the right-hand side here, I'm just going to go down to the previous conversion. And that basically will just set it to what I was editing at yesterday. So you can see that this has kind of changed a little bit. Now, basically what I'm doing here is just making my photos consistent. So I want them all, as I'm editing them, I want them all to kind of be at the same color and the same white balance. So this is what I was using for the last, these are the settings that I was using for the last lot of um, photos that I edited. It doesn't mean they're going to be 100% right for this lot because it's a different day and it's a different, different lighting and everything like that because I shoot naturally. So I can already see that this is a little bit dark here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and bring my exposure up, which is going to brighten the photo. Um, this temperature guide here, I mean, the, when you have blue, it basically means that the photo is going to be cooler. And okay. if I go yellow, it's going to make it warmer. So mm -hmm. you basically, um, if I was technically getting the white balance on a, let's say I was doing a family portrait for photograph, actual photography, then I would be very much more specific on what my white balance is in, in finding it to make sure the colour was perfect but for my ebay photos i'm simply going off my eye and what looks good to me so if something looks a little bit warm or something looks a little bit cool but i just kind of fiddle around with the temperature there change my um exposure a little bit if i need to i always keep my blacks down here at five percent that just gives it a little if i move my blacks here you can just kind of see it darkens up or lightens yeah. up and yeah so yeah. i normally keep it about five every now and then on a certain item I might go and, and, and change that. I've got the vibrance pushed up a little bit here and the saturation pushed up a little bit and that's just to make sure that my photos don't look too dull. Um, you obviously don't want them to go stupid saturated so it totally changes the colour but yep. um, because my photos have been shot in raw mode the colour can look a little bit flat sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down to each individual one and just check. I might just need to alter the exposure a little bit on some of these. So you'll be able to notice that some of these, they're not straight. Like I told you, I'm going fast. Some of them, like that one doesn't even look in perfect focus. I don't really care. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm... Yeah. I'd just rather shoot fast and um, as long as the main photo is definitely in focus, I will not do a main photo that's not in focus. Uh -huh. But um, now if the photo is like this, I just come around, rotate the photo. Obviously when it's white, you might need to bring it down a little bit more. And those photos are now colour corrected. And done. So I'm just going to um, highlight all of them and I'm going to open these images and bring them over to Photoshop. So while these come over to Photoshop, I'll swap screens for you. Um, share screen, application. Where is Photoshop? Okay. So these are coming over to Photoshop now and what I'm going to do with them in Photoshop is I'm going to either straighten them up a little bit, crop them a little bit um, and then I'm going to resize them all so that they're at, the, at an optimal size for eBay. So if anybody has any questions about white balance and getting that warm or cool or whatever, a lot of it is by the is just by your eye looking at it um you know like if your photo looks too gray then you need to warm it up a little bit like you need to add some saturation or you need you, you don't want a dull looking photo do you know what i mean you need to make sure yeah. that you've got a little bit of oomph in that photo so don't make it too dark mm -hmm. um i'm just looking here hey gimbal hey going um PVP's in, hello. I can't see anyone else. So let me just go in here now. I'm going to click over to my screen. 
Now, as I'm working on this, Ian, I can't actually see the StreamYard screen. So if, if something goes wrong, you just have to tell me. Yeah, of course, can. Yeah, no problem. Now, when I'm doing a photo like this of a side um, image of the book, I'm not really that fussed. Do you know what I mean? Like, guys, I'm actually fine with this photo. If I wanted to, I could crop it in a little bit more, um, stretching it out. This is how it I could pull it in like this and, you know, it would just make it a little bit better if I wanted to. However, there it is before, there it is after. Um, I can do that. But, do you know, that's going to take me time to do that to every single photo. And as far as I'm concerned, half the people don't even look at the other photos. <laughs> All they're no, looking no. at is the main photo. So yeah. I'm really conscious of bringing in my main photo to make sure it takes up as much space of the image that it can. But on yep. all these secondary photos, I really just couldn't care less. I don't care that it's got this white bit here from the board. I, yes, I could definitely come in here. Um, um, oh, sorry. I could definitely come in here and like, you know, whiten that out a bit if I wanted to make yeah. that look better i really just yeah. don't care <laughs> i know yeah. that photo looks better so unless it's a really expensive item or something but i'm just not going to stuff around with it i'll leave yeah. that one now because it's done but really i mean you can see there even if i just whited this out a bit here and and that color's not quite right i'd have to go in there and are you okay for a question or Oh, yeah, ask them away as they come. I'm, I'm okay. like, fine. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Um, upper, core, upper core is asking, um, space-wise, do you find you have to delete photos after a while? Um, well, what I do is once I have finished editing them all, I keep all the JPEGs and I keep them onto a hard drive, um, mm -hmm. but I get rid of all the raw images because there's no point. I don't need to keep them, you know, realistically, right. if I need to reef reshoot something I can the raw images do take up a lot of space on the computer um and um yeah I'm, oh. I'm not I, I definitely don't want to keep the raw image I do keep the jpeg on a hard drive I don't actually think I probably need to um because I would probably struggle because I take so many photos I would actually struggle to go back in and find the particular photo that I wanted if I yeah. needed to I, it would be quicker for me just to reshoot it so I'm not actually right. sure why I even bother keeping them to be honest uh -huh. once they're once they're being listed there's not really a whole much point in keeping the photos so this photo you can see there is quite a lot of white space around it you know if I didn't have too many photos to edit I would probably come in here and stretch that out a little bit make it a make it a bit bigger or just it'll look better but um I'm not going to but I am going to show you because I just missed a step because I got talking but basically, after I have done the photo, whether or not that is if I've pulled it in, stretched it up, or if I'm just simply going to leave it as it is, I have a, um, down here, I have, you can see where it says eBay sizing down here. So I have, these are all actions basically, and they all do different things for my photos. Um, most of them aren't for eBay, they are, they're for my photography business. So, yep. um, but over here I've got this eBay sizing and if I click on this eBay sizing, what it does is it just automatically resizes the photo for me so that it goes to the optimal size of um, eBay, which is um, 1600 pix pixels. So it just means that it's not too big. It's not – if your image is too big and you load it into eBay, it's going to take people ages to um, – you know, sometimes when you, a photo takes ages to load because it's too yep. high resolution or it's just too big a file. So by yep. sizing my photos, because when I'm taking these photos, they are a big – they are a big file. Um, mm -hmm. So if I resize this down, it's just going to make it – optimal for eBay and it's just going to make it clear on eBay and they'll be able to flick through it fast. So basically as I do each one, I just push that resize. Now this one's obviously a main photo so I'm definitely going to stretch this out um, and I can just rotate it a little bit here to make it um, straighter and oops, 
and then I size it. Now this one, I can see it's not straight. It really doesn't bother me. I'm simply just going to size it so it's optimal. Um, this one, I'm not even gonna bother. Like I, I really don't care unless it's the main one. So um, most people are only caring I'm not saying it doesn't look better if they're all perfect, but I'm on I'm on a time thing here. So yeah. if it's clothes, I will spend a little bit more time straightening them up on other photos as well. But for books, I could not care less. Do you know what I mean? Let's just go here. Um Bron's saying that she wants to get you an iPhone so you don't have to do all this. She's trying to set up a, a GoFundMe. She, she, loves, she, loves, she just loves her iPhone. I think is, is a general general gist of, of her. And, uh, you know, I, th I think there'll be so many people that go, oh, my God, Mill does such an extra step. But um, my photos are pretty good quality. I do get lots of sales and whether or not that's partly because I do have nice clear photos, I don't I don't know. Um, I know um, um, Toby, sorry to interrupt you, Toby um, commented before that he doesn't edit his pictures. Um, he kind of puts them on as they are, um, but he obviously appreciates the, you know, the time that you take to do it. He understands your process. Yeah. But you enjoy it as well, I think. Well, I think it's just, I'm just, I'm not going to edit all of these now, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to the shoes now here because I think they're much nicer than a book. And you need to okay. tell them, um, you need to tell Lainey off. She's actually asking if you can uh, Photoshop her face. <laughs> Lainey, we don't need to do that. Um... But yes, I'm very good at photoshopping faces. <laughs> um, okay, so here I am. I'm going down to that previous conversion, which I did before. Just going to play around with my exposure a little bit. And you can see these photos are looking pretty good. They're nice and clear. This one's a little bit more yellow just because it was shot at a different angle might just bring that up so you can see the witchery this one i want to bring up the exposure a little bit because this photo is to show the size let's just brighten these up a little bit there's these nike shoes which i realized had a sticker still on them um pvp just asking what software you use this is bridge and photoshop okay. so um Look, there's the sticker. Forgot to take that one off. I'll have to Photoshop Oops. that one out. Doesn't Oops. matter. I can Photoshop, um, which is a pain. You don't want to be Photoshopping your, your tags out. That's time-consuming. That's a pain in the butt. Now, if you are using a phone, um, I would say use the Bazart app. And there is another one that's called um, Profoto, I think it's called, and that's also a very good one. Um, but I do think that you need to be doing a little bit of, oh, it just depends. I, I was going to say, I do think you need to be doing a little bit of editing. I do think some photos need to be brightened up, have a bit of, um, you know, saturation added to them. And I do think that a white background like this looks so much better. Um so if you if you can't shoot it so that it looks like you've got this white background, then I really would say use an app like Bazart because it will make the background white for you. Um, am I showing you the right screen here? Are you showing a white screen? I don't know. What screen is showing? Is this right now? Okay. Uh, yeah, the pair of trainers, yeah. <laughs> This is tricky. Okay, so um, now with my clothing photos, I do like try and show most of the photos as better. This one, obviously, I've put this sticker on there. I, I could show you how to Photoshop that out, but it's not necessary. I will, I'll redo that one later when I'm not live because it's I don't really yeah. need to show you how to. Um, oh, here we go. I'm probably just going to white it out simply like this. 
Um, Andrew wants to know if you can learn to um, photograph your book straight, please. <laughs> well, this is the thing, Andrew. If I want to go fast, then that's a compromise that I'm willing to make because to me, speed is more important than being perfect. Um, so if this was here like this, because this is a tag and I don't want a huge amount of my finger showing, I'm just going to zoom that in like that. And that's yep. going to make that tag really clean and easy for them to see in a photo. Mm -hmm. Would you brighten that up normally or not, maybe? No, no. So this one's a little bit um, off centre. I do like things. So obviously if I'm selling these shoes, I'm selling them for more than I'm selling that book probably. So I will spend a bit more time on these photos. And I do actually get quite a lot of comments on my shoe photos saying that they're, they're good and they're clear and they show everything. So... Now, Next, here's the main. Hey, Nick, how are you going? Radio. So there's my main photo. So that's going to be my main photo. If these photos, if this didn't sell with this photo, I would possibly go back in a little month later or whatever and change it to this photo. But I'll, I'll pretty much use either the first or second photo on a pair of shoes. Um, for that one, I'm not going to bother making it any bigger. I'm not even going to make that one any bigger. I'm just going to edit it as it is. This one I am going to pull in a little bit just so that they can really see that um, name of that shoe is a witchery. Question for Mel. Is mm -hmm. being an ex-Kate photographer, do you not use a rule of third with your photos not with ebay i'm really not fussy with ebay like yes with a definitely with a portrait if you like if you saw my portraits you'd see i'm very fussy <laughs> these are um but i when i started doing ebay i was fussy with my photos and it was the it, it, honestly it was the death of me like i just learned that i couldn't be like that with photos on ebay because nobody cares um like literally the com competing with like all the other photos that are on um ebay as well some of them are so terrible and i just had to let go of being like a perfectionist on ebay um if i do if i was to come and shoot your family the photos would be perfect um rule of third color everything would be top notch um but this kind of stuff i just honestly as long as it's clear and it shows the product that's all i want like i just want this to show show the product nice and clear there's no distractions here with a messy background or anything like you can clearly see that shoe now ebay does say that your product should take up about 80%, 80 to 90% of the space. So definitely on your main main image, you have to do that. So let's go back here, share screen. Let's go back to bridge. Okay, so that was some shoes. So let's go some shorts here, okay? Let's go these. Am I conf am I making this confusing? No. Okay. Anybody in the chat say think it's confusing? Obviously, put a comment in if you want to put a question. Please put a question first. I know it's. Um, 
strange to see when somebody else doesn't do it this way. But I guess what I'm trying to say is basically I take all my photos in batch and then I've got like all these photos sitting here waiting to do this and then I'll come in and I'll I'll like, oh, that's a shitty photo. Um, I'll come in and like edit in batch. Yeah. So when I when I have that like that photo there was blurry, so I know that there's an because I took that second photo, I know there's another one there that will be in focus. Like they'll never both be out of focus. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just yeah. Um, where are we? But let's change screen again now. What's Bron you've saying? Got the, you've, got the, you've, got the, you've got the wrong screen on screen, yard. There you go. Is it is it better now? There you go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You've got the shorts okay. on now. Yeah. Yeah. So the shorts are all so they're all coming across now into Photoshop. I um, think Andrew should buy them shorts. I can see Andrew <laughs> in them shorts. Andrew in those ones. No, he likes Bart Simpson or something. But I don't know. I guess so what I'm saying is when I do these, so I've obviously got a bulk lot of photos here. I took nearly 50 photos that day. So basically I take those photos, then I come and sit down with a cup of coffee one day. I do this editing and then I go in and I list them in bulk. So I don't just kind of do five or ten photos. I don't just go photograph five, edit them, and then list them. I more do them in bulk. I think one thing that I've learnt these last few months as I've had, um, I guess these last few months, what I've done is I haven't been listing every single day. So I think, let me just bring myself back up. I haven't been listing every single day for the last few months. I've been listing a bit more um, sporadically and that's just because I've had stuff going on in my life and whatnot. It's just been a, a random few months. What I've learned from that is even if I don't list every single day, I'm still getting sales every single day. So I don't have a pro – I think before I used to make a real conscious effort, oh, I have to list 10, 15, 20 things a day. So I'd always make sure I had those photos done now. But now what I'm doing is I'm doing these in batches of like more like 50 and then trying to get like 50 photos up on one day and then maybe two days later do another 50 photos. And um, so I'm more doing bulk batching rather than just smaller amounts. So it's, it's much quicker and easier for me to photograph in batch, sit down with a cup of coffee and a YouTube video or whatever, edit in batch and then sit here and list in batch. Um, and once my photos are all ready like this, it's so quick for me to list. Um, yeah. Rod's asking a question. Is, is there a specific reason that you photograph in inches rather than centimetres? Yeah, Rod, there is. So basically um, when, you're, when you're doing a photo like this, it's much easier to read that in inches than it is in centimetres. So... I, th I think for me, I'm more thinking of when somebody's looking on a mobile phone app and it's a smaller photo, um, you need to make sure that they're able to view that information. Otherwise, they'll just say, oh, well, I couldn't read it. So for me, it's more about just making it more visible. And I just kind of feel like yeah. if, someone's, if somebody's going to check the tape measurement, like I don't know what my waist measurement is in centimetres or waist. So if I was buying an item and I wanted to go and look it up and go, oh, how much is um, 30 inches, then I might go, um, I, I might go and get the tape measure out and measure one of my own skirts or whatever and have a little look at what the measurement is and then compare it to what the measurement on. Yeah. The item is. The so, item is. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. if you can't see it in the photo, then it's pointless in doing the photo. And yeah, fair point. Yeah. 
so I just always do um, do that. So yeah, I mean, there you go. That was that was pretty much it for the shorts and stuff. They were pretty easy. A lot of those photos I didn't even alter. I'm not I'm not worried that like that's not straight or anything. Like I don't I don't care. You know, as long as those main photos are good. I do think with shoes, but I do try and fill them up a little bit more and make the shoe photos as close as I can and and stuff just to make sure people can sh really see how the shoes have been worn. Um, and also you can make some really good money off shoes. So if you've got some really good clear photos of them, then, um, yeah, <laughs> those shorts are busy. They are busy, Nick, but they are board shorts here that um, – Aussies like to wear board shorts, so they like them loud and busy because <laughs> Aussies are pretty loud. <laughs> I'm not going involved in that one. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know that's basically that's basically how I how I would do it. And then where am I? <sighs> Photoshop. Basically, then once they're all in Photoshop here, I'll just show you what I do. I just pretty much go up here to File. I go down to Scripts and I go to Image Processor. Basically, then I take all these open images and they save into a JPEG into the same file. So these will all run then. They'll all batch process and they'll all convert them because these are all raw um, files. So now it's just converting them all to JPEGs and they'll all be, because I've already sized them to eBay as I've gone, they'll all be the correct size to just put straight into eBay. So I'll show you one other thing I do after this. Hmm. I'm just going to change screen. Camera screen. This is tricky sharing all these screens. Where's Bridge? Okay. So back into Bridge. So all of these, I'm just going to clear the filter here. All of those photos just went into a folder somewhere. Where is it? Oh, I might have sent them to the wrong. Let me just check where I sent them. I might have put them in the wrong. Saving this. No, they should be there. Where's the file? Can you see a folder? Or am I just blind? Oh, here it is. Okay, so all those photos have just come across... They're all now there in Bridge. They're all down to a JPEG and they're all sized for eBay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll go away this screen. I'm going to highlight all these photos and now I'm going to add some file info into them. So you can add, this is like your metadata. You can add whatever you want. So I can add eBay clothing store seller Australia whatever I want to write I can write um, I wouldn't normally put my name there I could write back from burnout um, I could put my um, shop name or whatever I then yep. mark them all as five stars I could put here Australian seller um, selling clothes books shoes on eBay whatever I can copyright it here and add my um, you know my whatever <laughs> over here within a URL I normally have a URL down here and I can either put my my store URL or my YouTube or whatever it is and then that updates all those photos so now they've all got metadata in them which Google likes <laughs> And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to name them. So I might, let's name these um, <coughs> top rated eBay seller. Rename them and 
all of these photos are now going to be called top rated eBay seller I'm with my, <coughs> sorry with a number and that's it so basically that is going to give me just a little bit of a boost in um, Google rankings and search engine optimization and um, <laughs> sorry I was just saw something in the chat <laughs> um, yeah I don't know if that makes sense but basically just by renaming them and adding some metadata it's just going to help a little bit with Google ranking so maybe if somebody was typing Australian clothing seller or something on eBay maybe one of my photos will pop up in the search might have more chance anyway than if it wasn't optimized for Google um, is now a good time <laughs> to mention I've never ever done it well, you know, a lot of people won't do that when they're on their phone because I, I don't even know if you're able to do that kind of – I don't know if you're able to name your phone, your photos. That's maybe a Photoshop option. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how you do it in your phone either, but obviously I don't edit in any way in my phone, so I'm not 100% sure. Me neither. <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 w I would say um, to you guys, but um, – if you are shooting in your mobile phones, always crop it at a square crop, like a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, I think e eBay prefers the one-to-one -one ratio. If you're resizing it um, manually like I do, you're looking at 1,600 pixels. You want your photo to be 1,600 pixels. Even on eBay, you don't want... Um, on your phone, you don't want your photo to be any less quality than 500 pixels. But, um, you know, most of the time if you've got a fairly new phone, all your photos are going to be over 500 pixels anyway. But, um, you know, you'll be able to tell if your photos look too crummy. What's going on in here? What am I reading in this thing? Don't accidentally open the wrong that's, folder. That's, that's, why I'm not, that's why I'm not saying a lot. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm staying out of it. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I, I'm just like I can't even I just don't know what's going on um um okay can you do the metadata on windows with basic photo editor oh you can sorry Pommy I read that wrong you can do the metadata yes okay so if you can do it I would do it I would add it you've got nothing to lose by adding it it takes two seconds and um yeah has eBay got any rules against going full-blown thumbnail so you could add text to make your item stand out more? Yes, this is a no-no. You are not allowed to add watermarks, text, borders. They do not want any of that stuff. So if they pick up on it, your photos could, your listings could get removed or your store could get reprimanded or whatever. But if you go into the eBay photo rules, it will tell you don't, don't put a border on your photo. Don't put anything else in your photo like it should be what you're selling and that's it like you shouldn't be putting I know like a lot of people have nice plants and um pretty looking like if you're selling a pair of shoes somebody might add like a handbag and some jewelry or something to make it look like a, like a styled setup but that's not yeah. for eBay that's more for Depop or Poshmark and and they're kind of more created to that styling look eBay just wants it very basic you know, they want that main photo to take up 80 to 90% of the space. They don't want any borders. There's there's a no-no against having watermarks um, and text. However, I will show you that if um, I would never put text on a main photo, that should never happen. But in a, where are we here? Um... Um, okay. Nick's off to, to tell Andrea off. I'm not getting involved in that one. <laughs> so if there was a fault in this skirt, for instance, yeah. right, I would add some text to it. So I would probably go red. I would get some red writing up here and over here. Let's just make this bigger. I might write something like hole in waistband or whatever. 
probably spell that wrong. Right, I might write that and then I might just do a, like if the hole was here, I might just go like this and draw like a thing. And I okay. would put that photo into my listings. So it would show you, they would know exactly where the hole was. Do you yep. know what I mean? Or or else I would like, I would circle it. Like, this skirt is very busy, so it's hard, but I would circle it like this or something. So. Um, and then obviously if there's any comeback, you can, you can point out the fact that you've, you know, in picture yes. six, you know, you've put it in and yeah, fair point. Yeah. So basically I've had that before where the customer's gone back and they've said, oh, this, this had a mark on it and I've been able to say to eBay, it, I clearly showed it in the photos. It was specific. It had text on the photo. I said read. The, I said in my description, make sure you look at all the photos for condition and I've got off um, and won because I've had it all laid out there in my photos. But definitely don't put any text on a front photo. Your front photo should be fill the space and be clean and clear and um, show that item, like show the item that you're selling. Don't show the plant in the background. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. Nobody cares about yeah. the plant in the background. They want to see the shoe that they want to buy. So fill it yeah. up as much as you can with the shoe in a nice clear photo that's you know, they can see and... Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I've got I've got a question. You were talking before about um, if you were doing it on a phone, it'd be a square photograph, mm -hmm. and um, you know, without wishing to be the thick one here, you know, the photographs you just looked at are not square; they're rectangle. No, but um, they work. That I have I have looked at that. <laughs> This works well for me. Like this is clear right. for me. But I think with your right. phone, what you don't want to be doing, and I know you do this, Ian, you don't want to be going into your phone app and just cropping it all at weird sizes. Do you know what I mean? Like when you crop it, like I'm sizing every single one of my photos to exactly the same size. So my store looks very mm -hmm. consistent. If yeah. you're going in there and you're cropping, so watch like this. If I go back to Photoshop and right if i'm in here in photoshop let's say this is your photo and you just okay. get a crop here like this and you go oh i'm just going to crop all this white out here like this do you know what i mean yeah yeah right and then your next okay. photo is hold on then your next so you've got this one photo that's wherever i that's sized in this shape and then what if you went to this photo and you went oh i'm just going to crop it like this so next minute you've got a square photo and then you've got this photo and then you've got this shape photo and every single photo is like different um you don't want that you don't want your photos to all be inconsistent in your store. You want your store to stay looking consistent. So whatever size you size them to, make sure it's the same for all your photos. Don't just stretch that in your apps or your Google Chrome or whatever it is you're editing, editing in. Don't just stretch, stretch the little crop tool out and crop around the white because then your photos are all going to be different size and they're not going to be sized nicely for eBay. So you'd be better off to go into your square. You want it into your square ratio, your aspect ratio, which is 1.1. You go into your square ratio, and I'm sure you can use your fingers to pinch the photo to fill the space or pull it down a bit um, like that. Just like in Instagram, you know, it's a square photo and you have to make your photo fit so that it displays nicely in Instagram. Right. And it's it's the same with – it's the same with um, – yeah, if you are cropping, and I know you do it, so if you are cropping where you're just stretching every single photo to a different size to remove the white ground and background around it, go and have a look at your store and just have a look if it looks really inconsistent and just see it, look at it from a buyer's point of view if they were looking at your store in general and look through other people's photos and you, you'll see the different sizing and stuff and see which one's are more appealing to the eye and the ones that are more appealing to the eye are the ones that are going to be more to eBay's specific measurements. 
Yep. Yep. Fair enough. Thank you. Yep. There you go. Nick saying, I use the square picture setting, job done right, drop them straight into eBay on the app and anything for an easy life. Yep. Yep. And to be honest, I'm actually getting a new iPhone, the iPhone 11 plus whatever in the next couple of weeks because my phone plan is about to run out just early June. So I am really interested to see about the phone, if I can make it, if I can speed it up with things like the books and the DVDs. I think with my clothes and my shoes, I'm always going to edit in this way. I just prefer it. It gives me more control over it. Um, but I think that what I'm going to do with the books and the DVDs and CDs and games and things like that, where I'm absolutely not worried if those books are straight and things like yeah. that, then I think I'm going to try it with the iPhone and um, see if I can get away with zero editing at all and just okay. um, really try and make that front photo neat. But I, I just don't know because I'm very set in my ways because I'm so used to using the big camera. But I am I am going to give it a go. So I'm, I'm yeah. also open, even though I'm set in my ways, and I know you're set in your way, Ian, but I'm set in my ways as well. But I'm also very aware that anything that can save me time, then I want to do. And if using the iPhone to take my book photos or my CD photos or my DVDs or whatever speeds up part of that process then i'm going to do it um yeah. like yeah. i know bron does very li little um editing on like she kind of edits her photos as as she goes but it's it's very minimal um but that's because she shoots in really good light and honestly when it comes to photos lighting is the most important factor like lighting without doubt if you've got crappy lighting your photos will be crap doesn't matter if it's artificial lighting, if it's window lighting, if the lighting is crap, your photos are crap. So um, lighting is the most important part. If, if, if you can get the lighting right on your photos, that's half the battle done. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Liz has got a um, question there, yeah. Mel. I don't know whether you can read it there. Who has? Liz. Do you want me to read it? Do your rectangle looking photos have the black down the sides to look square? No, there's no black. No, it's just white. It just actually blends in. Mine just look like they blend in with the with the thing. Yeah. Um, there you go, Bron. No piss farting around in my process. The pics aren't perfect, but better than some of the other ones on eBay. And that's so true. Like, like just... Bron is very the same. She has been a machine these last couple of weeks. Like I know you haven't seen her much on here because she's, um, you know, she's she's got her own stuff going on. But Bron is smashing out the listings, 30, 40 a day at the moment. She's absolutely killing it. She's She does not waste any time either. She gets in there, she smashes out those photos and she gets the listings done. And, and that's what it's all about. Nobody really cares about pictures of media as books. They know what it want and looks like, yep, that's exactly right, Nick, and that's why I don't care about getting those book photos, except for the main photo where I want it to be straight and fill up the photo. I don't care about any of those other photos. I don't care if they're wonky. I don't care if there's too much space around them. I literally are putting those photos in so you can see that the that's the book that I'm selling and, um, like, I'm not, I'm not going to spend any extra time straightening up those photos Um because what a waste of my time. Like, no, no. Clothing I do think is a little bit different, especially if there's details to see and stuff like that. Um, but books, CDs, DVDs, oh, my God, no. Smash. I mean, Bron sits here on her desk just like this, smash, 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 like smashing out CDs, like easy. <laughs> so those are the kind of things that are, that are different. But, yeah, I think it's just... Um, don't um, don't waste time. Just that's my motto, you know. Just go and people are so worried about making everything perfect. And even when I first started, that was one thing that really held me back because I was did have photography background, and I was like, I can't, I can't let go of this. Um, that was hard for me. And I did even try and outsource my photos at one stage to my daughter and she was taking them on an iPhone and I just 
I couldn't cope. <laughs> like I just couldn't cope. Like they were just at a different standard and quality and stuff to me. But um, where do you go? Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just I, I try not to get. I try not to get hung up on that stuff, but I think photos for me is probably the hardest thing to let go. <laughs> and and that's that's just because I did photography full time for like six years before this. So it's, it's it, you know, and doing family photos, I had to be very pedantic and and make them very perfect. Do you know what I mean? So it was really hard for me to let go of being perfect with my eBay photos, but it's the best thing I've ever done because nobody needs to be perfect. Like, you know, the, the motto of, of these lives and the motto that I'm trying to teach you guys is, is just to get your shit done. <laughs> like stop fart assing around. Like people like going so slow and then they're like whinging going, Oh, I don't get many sales and blah, blah, blah. Well, freaking get your hustle on. <laughs> like I, like I know hustle's a bit of a weird word, but sometimes we've got to hustle. And if we, if you want the sales, you've got to frigging do the work. So, um, yeah, you, they don't have to be perfect. Nothing needs to be perfect. And, and that goes with everything in our, in our life. We all need to step back from trying to be perfect on, to, to everything. Remember the, remember the guy with the hairy, dirty feet that got the good sale, go figure. That's it. Night Georgina. <laughs> Um, and, and that's, and that's another thing. If you go in and look at the sold comp, some of the photos of items that are sold are absolutely shocking, like shocking. So if they can sell photos on their shocking photos, then I'm sure we can sell photos on our subpar photos. <laughs> Andrew's perfect. Well, we all know that. We all know that he's, um, yeah, that's it, Daryl. They sell bad photos with high prices. So I don't know, crazy, crazy. But I think look at some of those photos and then sit there and go, why am I fart assing around trying to get this extra straight or this perfect, like no need. So if, if anything, what I want you to take away from this live is whatever you're editing in, make sure your white balance is correct. Like it's really important that your photos are the correct colour. Don't have your photos so they look too yellow or too green or too pink. You actually want the photos to look like the colour they are. There's no point showing a pair of um, a, a women's top and it's a purple top but your photos make it look blue. Like that's um, that's no good, okay? You have to get the colour to nearly as as matching exact as the item as you possibly can, especially with clothes, I think, especially with clothes. So... One, whatever app you're listing on, make sure your white balance is correct. Make sure your photos are not grey. I can't stand looking at dull grey photos. Add a little bit of saturation into it. Warm them up a little bit. Don't have grey looking photos. They look ordinary to sell. So whatever app you're on, just take note. Do, do your photos look too grey? Because it could be your lighting as well. You could have a rim light that you need to warm it up a little bit. So... Um, <laughs> honestly, like Andrew, I I might hate your photos, <laughs> but um, it, like, like this, I literally this is what I want with your photos: clear photos, crisp photos, especially the main photo. For the other photos, I don't really care so much about. But your main photo, it needs to be clear. Keep it simple. Keep it on a white background. Keep it free of clutter, and um, make sure your main photo, don't put up something that's totally crumpled either. Like that looks shit. If your jeans, are, your pants are all like got creases all over them, like honestly t spend like 30 seconds and run the iron over it. Like that's just being lazy. Like you want to sell that item, like you didn't go and buy it, source and buy that item to hang it up and make it look shit. So if your shirt, need, I know it's torture to have to iron in that, but occasionally if you're a clothes seller, you have to iron or you have to steam, whatever it is. So, you know, like if your shirt needs an iron, iron it. Like get your photo, clear photos, make sure your white balance is is correct and the, photo, the, the items look like the actual colour that they are. If it's red top, you want it to look red, not pink. Um, if it's purple, you want it to look purple, not blue. So 
make sure your colors are correct and then yeah if you can just size it to what ebay likes because it will make your photos look better so you know ebay likes it as 1600 pixels or on a mobile it likes it as a square one to one ratio and there's not that much to it just don't overthink them don't overthink your photos like yes get those few things right but don't overthink making them perfectly straight and immaculate and no. show the details show your tape measurements you know get them as get them clear but the main point is get it listed because seriously if it's sitting in your death pile that's just money that's sitting there you can't make money if it's not listed so what do you do you you can either sit there and spend an hour getting five things perfectly listed and photographed and immaculate or you can spend an hour and smash through 15 things or 20 things or whatever it is by going a little bit faster and making them not perfect well which way are you going to make more money off the five items that you listed or the 20 items you listed so that is my um motto <laughs> i guess that is just what i'm trying to get across in my videos you know like not everything in life is perfect look at these hair roots <laughs> Where not everything in life is perfect just do the best do do what you can work fast hustle and go and sell that shit and make money and that's it <laughs> so guys i'm gonna go Thank you for watching if you've got any questions hit me up um obviously but i really appreciate you guys watching and um there you go that's how i do things that's my process and yeah i hope you liked watching okay see you guys bye and also oh thanks to ian who somehow disappeared i don't know what happened he's maybe his laptop ran out of battery or something but um he's gone he's not here but thank you to ian for helping me out again See ya. That's it, Susie. Seal that friggin' shit. <laughs> See ya.